Hey there, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a time-lapse video out of your real-time video footage step by step from start to finish. And I'll teach you a few techniques to spruce up your videos a little bit so that they aren't just sped up and nothing else. I'm going to use a video editor called DaVinci Resolve even though I normally use Adobe Premiere. And that's because DaVinci Resolve is the most recommended free video editor out there as far as most opinions on the internet go. It's an unlimited free version too, so no watermarks or expiring trial versions. Keep in mind though that since it's a free version, it lacks a couple of good features, especially the GPU acceleration. But for relatively small projects like making time-lapse videos, it's totally fine. Alright, so the first step would be to actually get the software. If you already have the program installed, you can skip ahead. So just visit the website and click on the download button. They ask for some personal information before the download, but honestly, you could just type in whatever. I did that and they still gave it to me, but don't tell anyone that I told you that. Then start the downloaded installation file. Here I'm showing you screenshots, because for some reason when I try to reinstall it after deinstalling everything, it doesn't show all the options. Regardless, the only thing you need is DaVinci Resolve. It says that you must install these components, but that is simply not true. I mean, seriously, if all of these would be required to run DaVinci Resolve, why would they give you the choice anyways? With that just click on install and follow the next steps, which are just the license agreement and the location for the files, standard stuff. Then, the first time you open it, you will be offered a welcome tour. Once again, these are just screenshots since I already went through the tour and I can't get it to reset. Anyways, at first it will make a quick system check to make sure your computer can actually run it. And then it asks for a project resolution. Choose whatever you want, you can change this later. And lastly you can choose from several keyboard layouts. If you have some experience with any of these other video editors and are used to their layouts, it lets you set it up the same way, which is nice. But we are going for the DaVinci Resolve layout here. Alright, now let's actually launch it and create a new project. Now these are not just screenshots, I promise. Gonna name this one Timelapse Tutorial, there we go. Then you have a bunch of stuff showing up, which might be overwhelming for complete beginners. But no worries, I'm going to guide you through this. So firstly we need something to actually work with. Right now everything is empty. We need our video footage, which can be whatever, some camera footage, a screen capture. DaVinci Resolve is compatible with a very wide range of video formats. To import it, simply go to File, Import, and then Media. Or you just press Ctrl I. Then find your video file or multiple files in your folders and import. I'm using this video of a drawing I made, recorded with Clip Studio Paint. By the way, if you want to learn how to make recordings of any kind of software using a program called OBS, you can check out my other video that guides you through all the settings. And I have a video on how to make OBS automatically pause and unpause your recordings whenever your program is active or not. Pretty convenient. Now back to our video editor. So, if the frame rate of your default timeline does not match the frame rate of your imported video, then it will ask you if you want to change it. It actually doesn't matter all that much, because you can make a new timeline at any point, and you probably want to. So just click on don't change in this case. Right now we are in the cut mode, but for actually building our video we need to switch to the edit mode. This is where you assemble everything. Let's take a closer look at our footage. When you click on this little icon in the corner when you hover over the thumbnail, you can see some info like the resolution and frame rate. This one here in particular has a bit of a weird resolution, but that's no problem. We're going to need that information. Now right click on the video and select create new timeline using selected clips. This will open up this dialog for the timeline settings. The first thing I would do is change the start time code to zero. It's not intuitive to start at hour one, I don't know why that is the default. I usually don't bother changing the timeline name, but you can name it whatever you want of course. 
Then uncheck the Use Project Settings option to unlock more settings. Go to Format and change the resolution based on the video file. Now you do not want to stretch out your video footage. Making it bigger doesn't increase the quality, quite the opposite actually. However, something we could do is making the video wider into a square format and then add a background. A square format is a good compromise between vertical screens like on mobile phones and horizontal screens like for PCs. So I take the larger pixel size of the width and height, in this case it is the height at 1280 pixels, and set both sides to that value. As for the frame rate, it doesn't need to match the one of your footage, so you can set it to whatever you want. Since we are making a timeless video, a very high frame rate is actually redundant. More frames are useful for smooth movements. However, in time lapses, the movement is so quick and hectic that you won't have smooth movements at all. So let's go for 30 FPS instead of 60. Just make sure you have the right frame rate here, because this program won't let you change it later. You'd have to make a new timeline again. However, other video editing programs might let you do that. It's always possible to later export the final video at a lower frame rate though, if it's too high. Ok, let's create it now. As you see, the video is automatically moved into the timeline and centered in our square format. Now, in order to speed it up, simply right click on it and go to Change Clip Speed. Here you can adjust the clip speed as a percentage and you'll see how the duration changes. It doesn't let you directly adjust the duration though, unfortunately. Once again, some other editors let you do that. Click OK and the clip is going to be significantly smaller. You can play it back to see how fast it is now. By pressing the space key you can start and pause the playback. However, if it is really fast, then it might start to get laggy. The editor is trying to process all of those frames in a really short amount of time, which is quite tasking. However, when the video is rendered in the end, it will all play back smoothly. Alright, now basically you could be done here. It's sped up, so it's a time lapse. But perhaps you want to do some more editing and maybe add some extra stuff real quick. So let me show you a few simple things you can do. Firstly, you might want to cut out parts or make different parts play in different speeds. For that purpose you need the blade tool, which is up here in the toolbar or you can switch to it by pressing B. Then click wherever you want to have a cut on your clip. It magnets to the playback head so you can find exactly what point you want to cut through. I'm just doing those cuts wherever all will in hilly. I just need to demonstrate how this stuff works. Then switch back to the normal cursor. Pressing A also works. By dragging the borders of the clip you can also change their length by removing parts. Or make it longer to make parts visible again. It's all reversible. If you want to delete parts you can easily do so by clicking on them and hitting the backspace button. It's also possible to do a so-called ripple delete, which also moves the clips behind the deleted one so that there won't be a gap. Just press the delete button to do so, or shift backspace. Of course, all of those options are also available in the right click context menu. Now let's adjust the speed of those individual clips. There is a much easier way to do so than the previous method. Either right click and choose retime controls or press ctrl R and the selected clip is getting this extra bar. You can also select multiple clips at once and turn it on and off with the same shortcut. When you drag the borders of the clips up here on the top bar, instead of cutting them, you are actually changing their speed and therefore their duration. Careful, if you are dragging the borders below the top bar, you are still cutting the clips, not retiming them. So you have perfect control over which parts should be faster or slower. Quite convenient. Ok, now let's add the background that we talked about before. I'm gonna import this nice looking pattern here that I made. We need another video track for it. Simply right click over here and click on add track. Then right click on the track with the video footage and move it up. Now drag the background image on the timeline and put it on the lowest track then expand it to the entire video length. 
It automatically resized the image to fit into the video as best as possible, but you still might have to do some resizing. For that purpose, click on the inspector up here in the upper right corner. While you have the background image selected, you can do all the transformations you need over here. And if you need to revert some of your changes, then simply click on the circular arrow here on the right. Alright, how about we add some text now? Maybe you'd like to add some notes, or maybe your name is a watermark. For that purpose, click on the effects up here with the magic wand and a new menu will appear. Here are all sorts of effects, transitions and filters. What we are interested in now are the titles though. You got several templates here. Let's go for a simple text and drag it on the video track above the timelapse. I'm gonna expand it over the entire timeline again. And now here in the inspector we got all the options for font, text size, color and so on. Gonna just type in my name and make a watermark out of it. To reposition it, simply drag it wherever you need it to be in the preview. You can have more fine control and turn off the magnet by holding the ALT key while dragging. If you want to lower the opacity to make a constant watermark out of it, switch to settings and down here you can adjust the opacity value. Similarly, you could also import your logo into your project and have that as a watermark. This time let's drag it directly from the file explorer. If you drag it to the top of the timeline, a new track will be made automatically again. And just like before, you can resize and reposition it from the inspector menu and lower the opacity if needed. Now let's actually do something with the audio tracks available to us and add some background music. I'm just gonna add a song that I made myself in here and adjust its length so that it matches the time-lapse. Alternatively, you could also adjust the time-lapse length to match the song's length. A little warning though, if you are going to upload it on YouTube or another platform that checks for copyrighted music, make sure that you either use royalty free music or music that you own the license of. Otherwise you run the risk of your video getting copyright claimed or even straight up blocked. You can adjust the volume by simply dragging the white line in the middle here. Make sure you are not making it too loud or too silent though. And perhaps you want to have a fade out at the end, so that the song doesn't just abruptly stop. There are two quick ways to do so. The first one is to go to the auto transitions here in the effects and drag the cross fade zero decibels to the end of the song. If you don't see it, you might need to zoom in. This adds a little box that you can adjust and from the point where it starts, the volume goes steadily down until it reaches zero. Do some test listening to make sure that the fade out feels smooth enough. Another thing you could do is placing some keyframes on the volume level line by holding ALT and clicking on it. You can create as many as you want and place them however you see fit. This gives you more control, but isn't quite as convenient as the other method. Especially if you need to change the length of the audio track later on. Alright, when you are satisfied with the editing, you can move on to the export phase by switching to the deliver tab down here. Here you can decide the file name, where it gets saved and the specifications of the video file. Up here it gives you some presets. YouTube presets with several resolutions to choose from might be useful, but let's actually try to understand what settings you need and what they do. Firstly, the format and codec. MP4 is perfect for uploading. And the codec should be H.264, that's pretty much the standard. You can leave the encoder at auto. The resolution and frame rate will be automatically set to the timeline settings, and I would recommend that you leave them at that. Now one important thing is the bitrate, here it is just called quality. The higher the bitrate, measured in kilobit per second, the better the picture quality. But the file size will also get larger. Now if you're going to ask me what these automatic quality settings mean, I don't know. And I wasn't able to find a good answer on the internet either. 
There are bitrate restrictions for uploads on various platforms. YouTube, for example, has a table for all the recommended values. So if you have a video in 1080p with 30 FPS, then you should go for about 10 megabit per second. Which you can type in here in the restrict to option. So 10,000 kilobit per second. You could also go for something lower and then check if the video still looks good. And if it doesn't, like it's super pixelated, simply render it again with a higher bitrate. By the way, as far as I understand, this will export the video in a variable bitrate, not constant. So this saves at least some disk space. If everything seems good, click Add to Render Queue, which adds your timeline over here. And if there's nothing else to add to the queue, then Render All. This can take a while, depending on the processing power of your computer and how large and complex your project is. After that, the file is done. I recommend watching it to absolutely make sure that it turned out as intended. And there you go! Now you know how to make a timelapse at the exact length you want and how to easily add some extra stuff that makes it extra interesting. Of course, there are many other things you could do. There are tons of tools and creative ideas you can explore if you do feel like it. But I want to keep this video short and simple, so that's gonna be everything I'll show you this time. I hope it was helpful to you. As always, if you have any questions or constructive feedback, then please leave a comment down below. Just know that I am not their tech support and that DaVinci Resolve is actually not the video editor that I personally use, so I might not be a lot of help to you. Anyways, thank you a lot for watching and see you next time.